Hi and welcome to this tutorial of Tape, Baby Audio's new AI-powered tape effect plugin. Tape is a versatile plugin that can colorize, saturate, modulate, compress and distort any type of sound. It's available for Windows and Mac and runs on all major DAWs. In this tutorial, I will walk you through all of Tape's features, explore some of the many ways to use the plugin and give you some starting points for your own musical endeavors. Before we dive in, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, the AI in Tape stands for Artificial Intelligence. It is a terribly overused buzzword, but we believe AI is the future of music technology when used with a real benefit and purpose. Now let's take a look at the plugin. You can resize it by holding and dragging the lower right corner. With the preset bar at the top, you can load, save and import your presets. In the upper left corner, you can change the color scheme. And if you click on the Baby Audio logo in the middle, the plugin is bypassed. The circle icon on the upper right resets the plugin to its initial state. Even with all controls set to zero, the plugin will still at least subtly affect your sound, just like a real tape machine would. The central parameter of tape is drive. It lets you saturate your sound, add a little warmth or heavy distortion. And just like real analog tape, it always sounds musical and rich. At low settings, it adds warmth and body. As I raise the level, the sound is increasingly saturated. The further I drive it, the more distorted it gets. If you want even more distortion, switch the input level to hot. This will boost the incoming signal so it hits the tape even harder. When I reset the drive control, you can see it goes below zero. This gives us a cleaner signal with less distortion but retains the coloration of the tape machine. With the little switch next to the drive reel, you can activate drive auto gain. The output level of the drive section will be automatically adjusted and stay more consistent regardless of the drive level you dial in. While it's fun to heavily distort sounds with drive, you can also use it in a more nuanced fashion to subtly add warmth and body to any sound. It can also be helpful to give bass heavy sounds more presence in your mix. This 808 for example is made from a pure sine wave, so unless you're listening to this video on good headphones or monitor speakers, chances are you can't even hear it yet. If I run the sound through tape and slowly turn up the drive, the added overtones in the mid and high frequency spectrum make it more audible even on smaller speakers. Tape contains a brick wall limiter at the end of the signal chain, so even if you turn the volume up all the way, it will not clip in your DAW. This means you can sort of use the output level to even further compress your signal, which can sound pretty nice on something like a drum bus. With the mix fader, you can blend between the dry and the wet signal. This allows for techniques comparable to parallel compression. For example, you could give a drum bus a little more weight by blending the dry drums with the overdriven signal. The mix fader also enables us to use tape as a modulation effect. More on that later. One of the typical characteristics of magnetic tape is that it introduces a certain amount of noise to a recording. Back in the golden era of tape machines, engineers went out of their way to keep the noise level as low as possible. Today, many producers add noise to their tracks on purpose to get that cozy warm feel of their favorite songs of past eras. With tape, you can add as much or little noise as you see fit. Just work the fader to bring the noise. When you stop the track, the noise cuts off as well, just like it would on a real tape machine. When I solo the kick drum, you can hear the noise is gated, so it only shows up when a sound is played. 
This means you can use tape to easily add noise halos to drum sounds or samples. Just turn down drive, turn up noise and blend the dry kick drum with the noise signal. You can of course create very obvious lo-fi effects by adding a whole bunch of noise, but also try to use it more subtly. Even a little hint can make a large difference and help make your mix sound more pleasant and alive. Wear introduces wow and flutter. These pitch variations are caused by the wear and tear of the tape's mechanical parts. It also alters the frequency response and slightly messes with the stereo image to emulate worn out tape and misaligned tape heads. Or to sum it up, it makes your sound old and lo-fi. As I turn up the wear fader, you can hear how the sound gets more and more wonky. At maximum level, you get a nice lo-fi aesthetic. Or dial in just a hint to give your track a subtle organic quality. You can even use wear to create some interesting modulation effects by blending the dry and the wet signal. If I set the mix fader to 50% and slowly turn up the wear, you can hear the sound starts phasing. As I turn it up, it sounds like a flanger or a chorus. Another valued feature of magnetic tape is that it reduces the dynamic range of sound, or in other words, it compresses it. Tape compression sounds very natural and pleasant to the human ear, which is why mix engineers have been using this technical limitation to their advantage for decades. The hotter the incoming signal gets, the more the tape machine evens out the peaks, rounds the transients and glues everything together, which is where glue gets its name from. With tape, you can dial in the glue compression independently from the drive level. So more compression does not automatically lead to a more overdriven sound and vice versa. As I raise the glue fader, you can hear how the drums get more and more compressed. The hi-hat and percussion are now pushed to the front and the beat sounds more dense and in your face. If I raise the level even further, the beat starts pumping. The hi-hats and percussion duck down when the kick or the snare hits, which gives the drums an even more aggressive character. Note that even at maximum levels, the compression of tape sounds musical and pleasant. For more extreme results, try chaining two or three instances of tape in a row. Glue sounds great on the drum bus, but it's also wonderful on vocals, guitars, or even the mix bus. Magnetic tape is known to alter the sound of recordings in various ways. Most notable is the attenuation of the upper mids, which is one of the reasons that the sound of analog tape is often described as warm. But sometimes the loss of high frequencies can lead to a dull or muffled sound, which is why audio engineers of the past added so-called exciters to the signal chain to retain some of that brilliance and crisp. With tape, you can simply control the attenuation of the upper mids and highs with the presence fader. Turn it down to get a warmer sound or turn it up for more brilliance and presence. Presence can also be a very useful tool to layer your sounds and give your mix more dimension. Try to turn it down on sounds that you want to keep in the background and boost the presence on sounds that you want up front, like a lead vocal. With the high and low shape faders, you can fine tune the frequency response of the drive section to your taste. The louder or hotter you drive a signal on magnetic tape, the stronger its frequency spectrum is altered. Typically, the low mids and upper highs are boosted, while the low end and upper mids are attenuated. While this behavior is part of what makes analog tape sound so pleasant, it can also introduce some issues. Let's take an 808 bass, for example. As I turn up drive, you can hear that tape adds harmonic overtones in the mid and high frequency range. 
but we also lose quite a bit of the low end and our 808 gets very mid heavy the more I drive it. Now this could work great on some signals like an electric guitar, but we don't really want a bass without any low end. This is where low shape comes into place. If I turn the fader to the right, it preserves the lower frequencies and they're not driven as much as the rest. We still get the distorted mids and highs, but we don't lose the low end. If I turn it to the left, the bass frequencies are distorted even more than the rest and we lose most of the low end. High shape works just like that, but for the high frequencies. Turn it down for more distortion or up for less. So effectively low and high shape work like an EQ or a filter and are powerful tools to shape your sound. Keep in mind they affect the bias of the drive, so they will only have an audible effect if you actually drive your signal. And finally there's the model selector. By default, tape emulates a single tape machine. If you switch it to dual mode, your sound now runs through two tape emulations and the drive is evenly distributed between them. The effect is mostly very subtle, but Dual mode can give your sound that little bit of extra dimension and texture to really make it shine. This concludes our tutorial. We hope you enjoyed tape. Um, this video inspires you and helps you to get the most out of your baby audio plugin. Keep in mind, there is no wrong way to use tape. So experiment, explore and truly make it yours. Thanks for watching and see you soon.